Hello, everyone. How Megan made a couple's grief about themselves. I have never met a woman as evil as Megan. She is willing to trample on other people's pain to gain attention and then money. A person like that really does not deserve to exist on this earth anymore. Right now, I will expose her and that useless man. Harry and Meghan Ware shared their expert guidance and expertise with parents who had tragically lost their children as a result of social media bullying. Yeah, I'm not sure how it makes sense either. This is a synopsis of what occurred. First, I assumed it would be a standard body language analysis with no additional information. We were going to have a good time, be entertained, laugh at the article's expense, and have a wonderful conversation. And it was similar in several ways. Now, I expected this to be a little longer, but I'm glad it was just nine minutes long since what we saw in my trailer analysis turned out to be much, much worse. In fact, at the start of the study, I assumed it would be quite unremarkable because Megan had a neutral expression, similar to the one you are seeing now. And Harry did his typical, I have no idea what I'm doing here. So I didn't have huge expectations for this. But then something shifted in Megan. There was lip pressure, as if she was no longer the focus of attention. She was becoming a little bored. Even though the interview was brief, there have been claims that she screamed at the video's production staff for reasons that I have yet to check. But it may have been because we already knew Harry was speaking and she had this unimpressed expression. And we were able to determine that the interviewer interrupted Megan while she was delivering her best thoughts. And that's why you notice that particular lip pushing and killer appearance. Megan's actions, however, elicited far more criticism. Looking at Harry when he was giving his first responder speech, which I need to say again, Harry stated that parents must be first responders since even first responders are unable to recognize the signals of someone wishing to commit suicide. And that doesn't make sense because the indicators of someone having those ideas appear before the event. First responders arrive following the attempt. So, as usual, Harry was talking rubbish and I'm not sure if Meghan's expression is because she was irritated because Harry was saying nonsense or because she wanted to say the rubbish herself. However, there was a couple who tragically lost their kid as a result of social media bullying. We may observe a few things. The first is that Meghan's body language remained quite consistent throughout the interview. A fairly brief interview, there was no change in posture. There was no way she could move seats. Nothing. There is nothing important to discuss. Harry, on the other hand, had some responses when the couple told their story and discussed their awful experience. He placed his hand between his knees, putting it on his thigh as if he were pressing his lips. He was really uncomfortable and he planted his feet in the same position he does when he is scared or concerned. One foot is sideways on the floor while the other lies flat over the other. So we know that Harry had an emotional response to the couple's encounter, but then we got to this paragraph. To the recounting of the narrative, Megan had these troubles back then, as she stated during the opera interview, and you remember how it brought us to tears. Many people said Megan was lying and all that, and I made it plain last night that I hadn't watched the footage, and I didn't see how Megan's so-called experience could be relevant to parents who had lost a kid. And my best assumption, which was incorrect, was that she was discussing her miscarriage as if she had lost a kid and the parents had lost their child. Something like that was involved. As she was doing this, she placed her hand on Harry's leg and Harry, well, Harry was not very interested in the talk. In fact, when Megan started talking about our recovery, they both glanced aside. They do not look the interviewer in the eye. And this is what I needed to be very clear about. Honestly, do you find that fake face disgusting? I hate her so much. If you feel the same, then comment number one and vice versa. If you like her, then comment number two. Megan was referring to a period in her life when she had uncontrollable thoughts about suicide. And I have to wonder how having thoughts of suicide at some time in your life assists parents who have lost a kid in a sad event, especially given Megan's accusations about internet abuse while married 
into the royal family. She had an office that could manage all of her communications for her. She could just close the laptop. She didn't need to do anything. She could have stayed a princess without having to read her responses or remarks. To be conservative, she was one of the 1,000 most fortunate women in the world. But she might have easily been one of the 100 most privileged women. And she said that she got these feelings as a result of internet abuse. Megan, you did not need to read the comments. That infuriated me. It even generated a completely new meme response, which you can now use on Twitter or X. Then we go on, and when she continues to remark that it's wonderful to be upfront about it, you can see that smirk, smile, and attitude, which is almost amusing given the subject matter. For a little moment, she employs her acting talents, attempting to obliterate her inner brows, as in grief or distress and facial emotion. But it was so cheap that I couldn't explain how false it appeared. Not to add her statement that she would never want someone to feel that way, and she was essentially suppressing her laughs. I mentioned last night that I had never experienced it, and I pray I never will. But I do not believe there is a greater sadness in this world than losing a kid. And simply seeing Megan trivialize something like this, inserting herself into situations with which she has nothing to do as an experience, was disgusting. I realize that you may utilize your platform to raise awareness about this. That's one thing. That would have been excellent. Megan couldn't stop there. She had to introduce herself in that story up until the moment where she says, what I have overcome. And you can tell how much she enjoys duping. Oh, this is something that occurred to me, which I conquered. This is in awful taste, as if she had overcome this. She's alive, and she's now putting that face in front of the camera. How would you react if an entitled duchess discussed an occurrence like that? If you had lost a kid due to internet bullying, how would you feel? If she said, oh, I could save someone if I open up and then made this look, it's almost poking fun at it. Not to mention the closing seconds when she held back her laughter. And those of you who saw the hour and a half live stream know what my visceral reaction was to this. I've seen Meghan and Harry, particularly Meghan, fall low. But this is truly a new low, and it was heartbreaking to witness. How low can she go? Only time will tell. In fact, they have not lost a child to bullying. Why were they even interviewed? CBS should take full responsibility for this nonsense and apologize to the families. Totally disgusting. Besides, can we even believe that Meghan had a miscarriage? I don't believe that women who have had a hysterectomy can have a miscarriage. She plagiarized it and wrote a letter to the New York Times, which they printed as her work. Bookworm found a book called Chasing Light by Stephanie Tong that gives Meghan's narrative of her miscarriage almost word for word. Stephanie Tong lives in Vancouver, Canada. Now, isn't that a coincidence? The disgusting content is as follows. I drop to the floor with him in my arms, humming a lullaby to keep us both in calm. The cheerful tune, a stark contrast to my sense that something was not right. I knew, as I clutched my firstborn child, that I was losing my second. Lies, it wasn't her first or her second. People call me a liar when I say things about Megan that I see with my own eyes or hear her on various platforms. The woman needs to be reeled in and shut down. Recall that Megan said she went to the HR office for help with her suicidal thoughts. The bullied staff would have reported the bullying to HR. So Megan ran to HR with her sorry little story to deflect attention from the bullying reports and to mitigate the fallout on her from the bullying claims. This woman is a full-blown sociopath. She is a dangerous, evil monster. She never had any intention of unliving herself. My heart breaks for these parents who were subjected to this horrendous couple. Not only are these two bullies trying to advocate against bullying, but neither is qualified to make any call in counseling. Counseling psychology is an intricate field requiring highly specialized training. Neither of these two has that degree. What they are engaging in is fraud and downright quackery, trying to sell the same old snake oil. They're a couple of charlatans and shouldn't assume that they're experts in everything. They need to stop controlling the narrative and retelling the same lies. Ah, did you know? Harry has the title of 
chief impact officer. No one knows what he does. No one ever sees him there at the company. That company is letting people who earned their jobs go. But he has a job title. What for? I have no idea. And his qualifications. He also has a royal title in addition to a job title. So that explains it. A royal title qualifies him for the job title of chief impact officer. Does this make sense to anyone? I am at a loss here. After all, certainly, the interview was scripted. Every question prepared and approved by Meghan in advance and rehearsed. It is hard to believe that Harry was given such stupid lines. Maybe he forgot his piece. It was a live show. Paulie went off the script. When she asked Meghan about her own experience with those thoughts, Meghan was unprepared and floundered. I bet there was much screaming and cussing after the filming was wrapped. In addition, I'm sure there are many interviewers who would love to challenge the Harkles and all their lies, but the gruesome twosome would never agree to an interview that would show them in their true light. I have no doubt that they know every question of every interview they agree to, and they also call the shots on what questions can be asked. Even the idiots themselves know what assholes they've been, and would never put themselves in a position to have to try to defend their very shady characters. Well, that's enough shame and humiliation. How do you feel about today's story? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for watching our video. Don't forget to support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing to the channel. Goodbye, and see you again.